Shortly after graduating from the Academy at 21, Sarah attended a networking event organized by the Female Veterans Association. That was the first time she heard of women from her country deploying to peacekeeping missions. Sarah saw herself amongst them. Sarah inquired about possibilities to deploy. She had a lot of skills, but the opportunities available to her limited her in an administrative role. She convinced her commanding officer to get a transfer to a combat unit, as knowing how to use a firearm was a minimum requirement. Sarah was teased quite a lot by the men in her unit, because she was the only woman. Over time, she took on more varied roles and asked for more responsibility. She rose through the ranks to achieve her goal and deploy. Sarah's initial excitement gradually turned to disillusionment. Sarah was trained for combat, but she was hardly ever put on patrol. She was instead expected to do more administrative work. Back on the base, it was quite lonely. The men used to go to bars at night and play soccer together, but she didn't feel welcome around them. Sarah didn't always feel accepted in the mission, as one day she found sexist graffiti in the women's bathroom, but she felt too embarrassed to report it. By this point, Sarah had met and married her partner and had a child. Balancing work and family was a challenge. Sarah's child wasn't adjusting well to her being away, and she missed them dearly. It would take a long time before Sarah's relationship would go back to normal with her family. Occasionally, she was taken to meet survivors of sexual violence, but she felt helpless because she had not been trained on how to help them. Sarah had gone through so much to get to where she was, that she wanted to make sure that the next generation of women peacekeepers would not face as many barriers. Anna, Sarah's niece, wanted to join a peacekeeping mission inspired by Sarah's stories. Sarah had warned her that things could be tough. Anna spoke to the recruitment office. They told her that they were encouraging women to join so that they could meet the targets in the UN Uniformed Gender Parity Strategy. Anna mentioned that her aunt had deployed and that she had some concerns. They told her that the institution had implemented the MOWIP assessments. They had identified barriers and opportunities for women's meaningful participation in peace operations and had implemented action plans. They had even interviewed her aunts. Anna ended up joining the institution. She had originally thought about joining the nursing corps, but after boot camp, they said that because her grades were so good in math and science, and because she had a natural ability to drive, that she might be better as a vehicle mechanic. It was not uncommon for women and men to serve in mixed teams, and there were five other women in her units. Two years after Anna joined the armed forces, the MOEP assessments that Sarah and many of her colleagues had contributed to led to some big changes thanks to ongoing staff surveys. Nursing rooms were installed in the barracks. Flexible working hours for young parents were introduced, and both men and women were encouraged by the institution to take parental leave. Anna reflected on the stories her aunt Sarah had told about how the women's bathroom was always in the furthest corner of the barracks and how sanitary pads were not part of the standard deployment kits, and how the uniforms and bulletproof vests didn't fit women at all back then. When the opportunity to deploy came, Anna was sent to training. The Chief of Defense talked about the importance of the women, peace, and security agenda, and how he values teamwork and diversity, and that he had a zero-tolerance approach to gender-based harassment and discrimination. Anna was grateful for the pre-deployment training on how to communicate effectively with the civilian population including with victims of sexual violence, and on how to de-escalate riot situations without using violence. It made her and her fellow colleagues feel well prepared for the mission. While it was difficult to be away from her partner, Anna was glad she could go home every few months on a subsidized flights to visit her family. She also felt supported by the friends and mentors she had met. Upon return from the mission, Anna found the skills she learned to be helpful for passing the promotion course and on her next mission, she will be a unit commander and a role model, both at home as well as in the community that she'll serve. There are still many barriers for the meaningful participation of women in peacekeeping operations. 
And while Anna's journey was less challenging than Sarah's, there is still work to be done to improve the status and participation of women in peacekeeping operations. And conducting MOAP assessments is a critical step in that direction.